And if you know me, you know I love me some grandma, but I'm still gonna tell her how it is. Without feeling like, oh, they finna come shut us down. I need to be on my P's and Q's, I gotta drive home. I need to be on my P's and Q's, somebody might try to shoot the party up. You gonna have some rude staff. So let me get that. that financial aid office. Grandma is the place for everybody, somebody, and they will somebody and anybody, okay? <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Zakira Jane. I'm back with another freaking video for you guys. As you read by the title, this video is gonna be the pros and cons of going to Grammy State University. T. Okay? Okay. So I'm gonna start the video off by saying I know when people go to college, they look on TikTok, YouTube, and all that for the videos based on their college like Grammy State University on TikTok. Grandma State vlogs on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? And when I was going to apply for Grandma last semester, there were not that many videos for Grandma. I'm gonna leave it me. It was like this two content creators for Grandma. This is so I didn't really get the insight. Like, I still went, but when I came to Graham, it was nothing like what I had been shown. So I'm just like, let me make a pros and cons for this because I went, a lot of us like freshmen, 2020 class 2023 that just graduated. We went in there blind side of like it. That's why a lot of people transfer because they went in there blind. Like they thought it was one thing when it was really another. They were selling a dream, and this school is not gonna tell you because they want to get your money. They want you to come and they want you to pay you. And I'm not gonna lie, it is the pros and cons, right? And I'm not gonna keep y'all waiting. We are gonna get right into the freaking video because yeah. And if you know me, you know I love me some grandma, but I'm still gonna tell her how it is. Um, so we're gonna start off with my pros list. I got my list right here. Number one on my pros is that the school is very affordable versus other schools. Uh, if the other schools, your average, like for example, I wanted to go to Clark Atlanta. Clark Atlanta was going to be at least almost 60, 70K a year, a semester, or I mean a year full time for two semesters. Hmm, who has that type of money? Versus Graham was like on average 17K. Well, in actuality, mine was like 12K. And I had money left over from my financial aid. Y'all get what I'm saying? You don't put down like you really just it's very affordable. And I had a refund check and everything because the school very affordable to go to. They try to make payment plans. They try to work around you as much as they can to get you there. So I can say that they are a very affordable school. And then even just the living area around ground, like the living cost around the school is very 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 affordable trust me is a rural area number two i will say that it is very easy to make friends at, at grandma i hear other people go to college and they be like oh, i can't make no friends i can't make no friends at grandma land everybody is like i won't say everybody friendly because you do have those want to be mean people but you do have a lot of people who just will walk up to you hey friend or you can come in i like your shoes and now you got a new friend or somebody can say something to you like funny one time they, they don't even know you niggas just say like something and it can be like a personal joke between y'all now they gonna see it every time they see me like for example i took this guy ebt card with a food stamp card as a joke and ever since his friend was right there ever since then his friend from now on every time his friend see me after that he was like you gave him back his, his food stamp card yet like it's very very easy to make friends they have a lot of events on campus social events a lot of clubs you can join like i can't admit they are very very when it comes to that social life and that club life party life like social clubs like chess club or maybe west coast club they have a lot of that to offer and it's a great way to make friends like they give you that platform to make friends every single time like i gotta admit that because i know so many of my friends from high school they tell me all the time they can't make friends i'm just over here friend over here friend over there friends everywhere okay so number three is um it feels home like home if you're like me i grew up in mississippi and it really just felt like home because it was so rural now if you're from the city i do not recommend because this is not a city like y'all this is going to be straight country bunking okay okay number four they have very decent weather besides that first two weeks when you're there the first two weeks you get there it's going to feel like a living he double hockey six do you hear me i mean like they had to send out a severe weather warning like or stay drinking your water you gonna pass out type stuff like it was a hundred and something degrees it was hot and sticky and like oh my god we was walking in that just imagine walking in that it's not but after that the weather is good like it's not too hot not too cold when it rains, it pours 
but you know you barely get rain so you enjoy that little rain you do begin like it just really be a vibe the weather be vibing the weather when i was there the weather was vibing the weather wasn't no bad like only thing about the weather is if you stay on that first floor from 9 to 10 when it rains your stuff is gonna get messed up like they be having to have pick all their stuff up because of the damage the water does something they have to work on so that's not really the weather that's more so the school but yeah okay next we have the calf and tiger express so a lot of people this is like a touchy subject but our school i would say compared to other foods i've seen our school has pretty decent calf food so they have a lot of different areas for vegans you got the deli area with the subway sandwich is a pizza area in the pasta area and the burger area and the fried chicken area. you know what i'm saying it's just a lot of different stuff and they even got like vegetarian area like they make it something for everyone and their motto is like what the place where everybody is somebody yeah they really stand on that and then in the tiger express this semester we're getting a something new we don't know the name of it yet but they're gonna basically sell wings and fries but we have that we have chick-fil-a we have pizza hut and then we have firehouse sub i think that's what that place is called yeah, and we have those in a calf, and you can either use your Tiger Bucks, I mean your G Flex or your um, Real Money. Either way it go, when you use your G Flex, they don't charge you tax, like having a food stuff card. And every semester, depending on what you choose, but general, like general, you just get $100 per semester for your G Flex. It's just supposed to be like a thing for hard times and need, but most students they spend there is like it ain't nothing. The first week there. So that's a pro that you have those on campus, and you also like beside Holland, which is one of those freshman dorm freshman upperclassmen dorm is co-ed and it's across campus you have a subway by them and you also have king of wings which is one of my favorite spots and then right there between holly and notch you have a little in store like one of them stores they just sell food out the store you can't sit down it's not a restaurant you sit down but you just go in there buy the food and leave they got one of those and they be selling some good food i had a pulled pork sandwich from there oh my god i'm talking about finger looking good like what okay so next we have the tuesdays on the yard so when i was there for the most part almost every other tuesday they had like a little bit on the yard but they would come out play music it would be like from seven to nine i want to say and everybody would just be chilling on the yard listening to music looking cute you know socializing one of those social events i told you about like this video does not really need a lot of explaining i think until i get to the cones which i'm almost there then we have Pretty Wednesday. Now, everybody doesn't participate in Pretty Wednesday because I have never really participated in Pretty Wednesday. But Pretty Wednesday is basically like you get dressed up because it's Wednesday. And some organizations, some groups, some people pass out roses to girls they feel like are pretty, you know. It's just like, it's a tradition in most colleges. Like, you just get dressed up. This so one day after week, you just get dressed up. If you have an excuse to put on that one dress you're going to wear, this subject you're going to wear, this clean outfit you're going to wear. Like, just give you an opportunity to see yourself to i feel like it's just like an opportunity for people to see you outside of school and survival mode you're in this well this is me when i get myself together mode oh okay classes so the classes are relatively easy like to pass like your most professors will work with you on top of most professors working with you your classes are like the assignment's not hard when people be like most of the time when they fill these classes they grab it's either a they're not going to their class or b they're just simply not doing the work and see they simply don't understand it and they just not asking for help and like i said they have where you can add or drop classes so i'm like if you know you're gonna fit this class drop this class don't keep this class so that's another thing like that you have to take into consideration when it comes around easy classes as long as you make it easy for yourself don't get up in there and just oh the class is easy so i'm a lollygag and try to stay my grade at the end no that's what a lot of people do and a lot of people get put up in bad predicaments and you can't blame your professor for that so um did i just make my list up so next we have the high acceptance rate a lot of people when they think about college they're like dang what if i don't get in what if i get in what if my gpa not high enough grammar is the place for everybody somebody and they will accept somebody and anybody okay no matter your record no matter what you got going on um, they are going to accept you kind of like i feel like they're in them them and jackson star are like the same they have a very high acceptance rate they just accept over because that's more money in their pocket so if you want to actually get your education but you just worried that you didn't get enough in high school boom there you go they're gonna accept you trust me they're gonna accept you because there's some people i met on campus like how did you get in here how how did you get in here so next we have the hbcu lifestyle the party lifestyle whatever 
So I must admit that school's a party school. A lot of people say it's not how it used to be, but I had a grand time when I was there and it's all about what you make it. So like, if you sit in your room all day and you don't like, try to get out and go to the intramural, or try to go to the with your friends, you know what I'm saying? If you don't put yourself in predicaments to make friends, you're never gonna do it. You're never gonna get out and get the experience and stuff and like the whole marching band experience everybody getting ready for game day homecoming it is it's one thing to hear about it but it's another thing to live it because when you live it it's way more you be way more like oh like this is really i'm talking about homecoming everybody selling plates selling drinks gumbo shrimp chicken you name it barbecue they got the hunch punch over here, the cue all over here. Like, it just be everywhere. Like, you be so excited. And you be like, oh, oh, I want to try this, I want to try this. And before you know it, you messed up and somebody walked carrying into your dorm. But, yeah, that party lifestyle is definitely there. You just have to meet the right people and remember that when you party and stay safe. But, like, almost every night there's someone on campus throwing a game night. Almost every night there's going to be something going on. Now, don't go to every event because you'll get tired of it quickly. You'll see the same people, same music, same activities, same people throwing their booty. Same people smell like this, this, this. Same people get hot. Same parties get shut down. Don't do that to yourself. Make sure you go to dip and dab. And for the majority, the small parties with your friends, like smaller kickbacks with like 12 of y'all, versus going to a party where y'all have to pay to get in, will always be better with those small group of people, okay? Okay, I said what I said. Don't come for me. And I said on that. I had more fun at any with my friends more than anything else. You know what I'm saying? And it's all because y'all in y'all own space. And y'all get to drink how y'all want, smoke how y'all want, and without feeling like, oh, they're gonna come shut us down. I need to be on my P's and Q's, I gotta drive home. I need to be on my P's and Q's, somebody might try to shoot the party up. No, you in your own little space and stuff. And last but not least, on my pros is the apartment style dorms. I love it, I love it, I love it. It gives you that privacy you're looking for. Because a lot of people just be like, they can't do the like sharing roommate in college thing. You looking at me, I'm looking at you while you sleep. I can't. They got me in there, I'm fixing that when I get back. but. I can't, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, they have those options for that apartment style. You can close your bedroom door, lock your bedroom door, and you have a bedroom to yourself, your own closet, your own everything. I like that type of stuff. And that is such a pro to me, especially as women. Like, privacy is so big to me, especially when you go into there. Like, me, I was coming all the way from Illinois to Louisiana. I ain't know nobody. So, it's like, I need that. I'm like, one of the, I need this solitude space. I need a space where I can just clear my mind. I need my sanctuary. And they gave me it, and I loved it. Holland 216 Seafuki. And whoever got my room, shame on you. Shame on you. So now let's get into the nitty gritty of the cons. Like, I had 13 for each. So let's start it off with the drama. Oh my god. Graham is so little that everybody knows everybody. And drama gets around fast. And it's all about who you surround yourself. When I first got there, I was in so much drama without even being a like. I wasn't doing the drama, but I was always in the drama. And so I removed myself from a certain group of people. And when I did that, I was out of drama. I wasn't in the drama for a long time. It's all about who you hang around and what you surround yourself with. And there is such thing as wrong place, wrong time. And let me tell you guys from experience, don't try to break your neck to be nice to people. Don't. Because that, that gets you in drama. You know what I'm saying? Or it gets your name put in stuff. Just mind your business, okay? Mind your business, baby. Mind your business. Just mind your business. Because the drama is real. The drama is lethal. And I'm talking about lethal. Like, and it's very, 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 very draining. Because them, they, them, they like to, them girls have to get rowdy. Like, they just want to boom, boom, boom. And you probably here for your education. You probably got this all you got to fall back on. You like, you don't need to lose that being in drama. So. Like I said, drama is one of those biggest things there that just irks my nerve. There's always something going on. But when you like me, and after I removed myself from people, and I was like, minding my business all the time, I was just worried about me and like, I was in my circle. Like, we would hang out, we hang out with me, just like trying to be an everyday of being with everybody at. And like, them people, like, they can't be by themselves. They feel like they always got to be with somebody. You're going to be messing yourself up. Get you a solid group of friends and stick with them. Do not be. Friend group, hopper, friend group, hopper, friend group, hopper. Because Mike and group A ain't gonna like Susie, group B, and they gonna feel like you getting messed up by hanging with both of them. Mm -mm. It's too much that can go wrong. You know what I'm saying? So just tread lightly. So next thing is going through friend groups. When you get the ground, not to attend a group, friend group you're hanging with is not gonna be a friend group you stay with. It's very rare, and if you do, kudos to you. But yeah, it's just something you have to learn to like. Don't make the first bad friend be like, oh, I can't find no friends. No, keep going out, keep making friends because eventually you're gonna find your people. 
I was out here trying to make friends, and turns out my closest friends was right there and sharing a the dorm with me. You get what I'm saying? Like, you just gotta really give yourself the time. Don't just sit yourself on stuck on one group of people, no matter how much you care for those people. Sometimes you just have to look. Some people feel like distance, okay? So, next up, we have the teachers and limited majors and the budget. This, we're gonna do all this in one because this all oh, like the same thing. So, the teachers there are like, we have some good teachers, but we also have some bad teachers. And I wouldn't say bad at teaching, but like, some are bad at teaching. And then we have some teachers that can barely speak English. And then we have some teachers who are just straight up a hoes. And it's like, that's why you have to do your research before you sign up for these classes. There was a list going around once upon a time. If I can find out, I'll put it in the video. It was like a video, uh, a list of teachers to take and not to take because these teachers really miss you over. Like, I had one teacher, she was just so rude. It was an old lady, and she was so rude. And it just was like not working. I had to drop her class and everything. And she was so stuck in her ways, and like, she was older, so she just felt like we can tell her nothing. She, like, when we trying to help her, you know what I'm saying? So you just like the teachers are like you don't have that many good ones but you don't have like overwhelming bad ones where every class is bad and with that going on today is the limited majors Grambling does not have that many majors to choose from and i'm one of them people i wanted to go to culinary school but i settled for ground because i was just like you know what okay okay but yeah they don't have that many majors to choose from i can't remember how many specifically but they don't have that many last night i was with my friend Sign up for the gotogram and like I said, they did not have any to choose from. I thought that they had beef had like a um you know the program automotive not automotive but like welding type program, not even welding but like physical, physical held like sports. Um what did they call a sport major, but they did not. See what I mean? Like it be the little stuff like that. So that's just something y'all take in consideration. If you don't mind switching your major or getting a major that's similar to yours, like if they didn't have psychology, I would take criminal criminal or justice because those two tie and tie. So if you don't mind doing that, then by all means come home and come to ground. Um, on top of that, the school has a very low budget. Do not come to this school thinking they to give back to their students. Like they try to best, but it's not something they can really give back because grammar's really in debt. From what I was told, grammar's in freaking debt. So just like. Do not get your hopes up with that. Oh, they gonna be doing this? No, just mm -mm. like don't don't. They be trying to save as much money as they can, and they gonna try to take as much money as they can. I my my curtains broke. My um not curtains. My blinds broke in my room, and it's, and they are all our blinds needed to be replaced anyway, and they were supposed to replace them. Instead of just replacing them with their money, when I left, they charged me forty dollars to get every because I was in a four bedroom apartment. They got all four bedrooms with blinds replaced on my tab. And I'm just like, and in my head, I'm just like, y'all look at I like these girls because if it wasn't for that, we would have had a mom. And they try to get, they, they try to squeeze every dime out of you they can, okay? Like, that's something you got to be aware of because you, that stuff would like be draining. You have to call your mama on them and stuff. Next up, we have the cookie invasion and the mobility. Y'all. I'm just to be sure to speak with the creatures. The creatures be everywhere. The creatures, skunks, and the am animals and creatures that don't like be everywhere. Snakes will get bad when they start getting cold. I don't play them games. And them creatures be like, when I say everywhere, they be in your shower, in your room, in your closet. It's just something very like, <sighs> like it's very annoying. And now moving on to the not very mobile part. Graham is here, and besides those little restaurants I named earlier, everything else is like ten minutes away on the off the highway. And if you do not have a car and are not nobody with a car, you're gonna be door dashing a lot or you're gonna be Instacarn a lot and it's like very, very draining to your pockets. Trust me, okay? So I highly invest if you come here and like make friends with somebody with a car or get a car because you will need it because everything is away. All like Walmart, all that good stuff, restaurants away, 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 away. And you're gonna get tired of pizza, you're gonna get tired of Chick-fil-A, and you're gonna get tired of Subway, okay? Okay, and now we're gonna talk about maintenance. Maintenance at Graham is terrible. You could tell them people that you got a leak in your roof and they will not, I know people who have made, like we made claims at the beginning of the semester, the beginning. To this day, they still ain't came in that door and fixed that stuff. And they be claiming that they have sold such an overpowering amount of stuff to fix they had to put was prioritized and stuff now i can't say when i broke my bed they came quick because it's a priority i didn't got no bed you know what i'm saying but like our everybody first got the ground none of the air was working so they had to go throughout the school and fix everybody's air and they only had two workers 
who they only had two workers in the all doing this. And you have what six, seven, eight dorm buildings and like what like mm, I think like thirty hall, thirty door, thirty rooms on each floor. And each floor is like three floors. Let's do that math real quick. So you got thirty rooms times three, three floors. Wait, I'm missing up. Thirty. 30 times 3, 90. Times the 8 houses. I'm just assuming 8. 700 rooms I gotta go in and fix that stuff. No, you only got 2 people. So divide that by 2. 360. 360 rooms of peace. Like, they, they maintenance is just terrible. Like, it's so much stuff. Like, it never gets fixed. Right? And if it do get fixed, it's gonna get fixed over a break. Like, Christmas break or spring break or summer. Like, it is not gonna get fixed while you didn't need it. Okay, going on. So the safety of the students. Grandma has this bad thing. When something go on, they do not like to communicate. They do not want to tell them. Okay, on campus this past fall, there was this random guy he walked up to a group of girls. He was like, "Hey, do you know about hypnosis?" And she was like, "No." He was like, "Well, let me try it on you." And she was like, "Ha ha ha." Well, I'm just going off of what was told to us. Basically, she was like, "Ha ha ha," and she was like, "Okay." She let him do it, and she was stuck, and they could not get her out of that trance. I do not know what it happened to the girl to this day. And the guys, they fled it. The scene. And I don't think they ever caught them, but we were not made aware of this situation. Like, the school, another school that was almost an hour away, they alerted their students to be on the lookout for this possibly happen before Graham even told their own students that it was happening on their campus. And after that school put it out and the grandmother found out that we knew from the other school because of social media, that's when they decided to put out a statement. And it's like, it's so many situations like that where they don't put out statements and people are just walking around this campus. There was one um, guy on campus and nobody knew nothing. It was one o'clock in the afternoon. Everybody going to class stuff. We walking around. We knew nothing. You get what I'm saying? So it's just stuff like that. Like I feel like the safety, when it comes to the safety of the student, they know them. They can do better with communication and with the all around safety. Like just because you got a situation under control doesn't mean you don't need to inform your students. We are paying to stay here. We are paying to, our parents are sending us off here to get an education, not to see here and die off of the lack of communication. Okay, and I'm gonna leave it at that before I get irritated. So next up on my list is the rude people and unprofessionalism. So when it comes to people, a lot of you got a lot of mean girls on campus. You got a lot of well, I haven't met no just like straight up rude guy. You have some guys that like make that their personality, but you can tell like you can see right through it. But like you have a lot of genuine mean girls on campus. You just be like, I'm her, and now I don't wanna talk. And look at you crazy because like. Oh my god, I remember one girl, she was like, I was cool with her because we used to have the same class. And she was like, I can't be cool with you anymore because you always dress like a bomb. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but you know, for an, at a 9 30 class, I'm not gonna come in here looking like a runway model every day. This is not Vogue. So you're gonna have those mean girls, and you really just have to brush them off and kind of ignore them and just steer clear from them. I'm not saying like they'll punk you or anything, but just like you see her coming, you don't want to deal with that, go to the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, avoid them. So next we have, the, and you, oh, don't get me started on this. You're going to have some rude staff. Let me get the, the financial aid office. That financial aid office. I don't know who be peeing in a cigarette in the morning. I don't know who be making a man. I don't know if they, baby, that is ain't mm -hmm, good enough. I don't know what's going on, but financial aid, they will be so, so, so rude. Like, you have those who be nice and sweet, but then you also have them ones that just be rude off the bat. Like, they just hate their job. We did not hold a gun to your head until you come work here. But that financial aid stuff, they would have you like, they would have you messed up, like, real life messed up. And I just can't, I'd be like, uh uh. Like, I went in there one day, and the woman, she, I'm asking her for help, and she, well, look, baby, I, something about, you need to go up there and talk to her. And I went over there to talk to that woman. She was like, did you just come out of there? I am not gonna help you, just came out of here. She sent me over here, you, you tell me you're not gonna help me because I just came out of her office. Make it make sense. So I just left, and I'm just like, wait a minute, let me. Financial aid director phone number is in here. Let me call him, y'all. Cause do not play with them. Like, and I've never had a rude calf person, but I've heard that the calf people can be rude. Um, some teachers can be rude. It's a lot of rude. And about professionalism, I'm talking like they will talk to you like them people. Financial aid will talk to you like you bet crazy. Like I mean, talk to you like you nobody. Like you're not like their job is not to serve you at that school and help you do these financial aids. Like they really be. Ugh. Next is the fines, baby, the fines. Like I said earlier, I already explained, they will fine you for any little thing. Like, if something's reasonable, like, we know we're not supposed to have alcohol and drugs on campus, so I see why y'all find us over this, but like, 
that said you it's a it's a meeting a mandatory meeting for your dorm building and you don't show up you get a fine the you if it's fire alarm going off and you ain't out there you ain't come out your room and you ain't out your room it's a fine let's say um Let's say you accidentally break some fine unless they deem it like accidental like like my door our door had a hole in it and they was like we patched it up last year we didn't do like we didn't thoroughly patch it up so we could see why it broke again they'll deem that you don't have to do a fine just doing a work order last and not least on my cons list is the ghetto miss when we first got to school it was so ghetto it was so ghetto we had drug bus like i'm talking about swat coming out there in their uniform busting people uh we had people getting hypnotized we had people trying to set trees on fire right by the dawns like it was just a lot of stuff like it's very ghetto there you got all these fights back to back to back because i remember like everybody was saying like y'all need to stop fighting before we not have a homecoming and they don't play about their homecoming grab that little they homecoming and they spring for the spooky so it's like very very ghetto but it's like it is what you make it. It could either be a bad ghetto that's still be like training until you're known to like you still in the project or it could be a fun ghetto and just be exciting and you just be like la 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 la. It's, it's all up to you. It really is. So these, I got like 10 more just like just touch on subjects, not pros and cons. I'm not going to really even pull y'all on. So Grambling is not how, no more Grambling is not how it used to be. Back in the day, apparently it used to be like way more of a party school, but to me, I still have my fun. So like I said, it's what you make it. Number two, everything is a drive. So if it's not right there on campus, it's gonna be a drive and it's, it's the real. You have no vehicle or nobody with a car. Um, three, you will meet people from all over the world. I'm talking about, you got people from LA, you got people from Chicago, you got people from out of the country, you got people from Nigeria, you got all these different people that you're gonna meet. And I'm just telling you now, you have to be very open-minded to all the opinions. You have to be very open-minded when you're talking to people. Just he might tell me, hey, fool. That don't mean you're disrespecting me. That's just his slang of how they address people where he from. You know what I'm saying? So that's just something you have to be open-minded about. But that's what any college you go to really. And it's just something you got to be prepared for. And so um, something to touch on, like I said earlier, if you're used to the city life, this might not be for you because it's very much not city. Um, number five is staying focused. One thing about people like Grandma I realize is they get off track really easily. They don't stay focused. They lose sight of what's really important fast, and that's a problem. If you ask me, that's a big problem. If you stay focused and you can balance your school and your party, you will be very in your social life. You will be very very successful. But if you cannot, you will be out of here quicker than you know what. Um, another thing is the parties. When you go on a party, always stay safe. Never just take stuff from a stranger. You know, I usually try to go with somebody like a friend or somebody you know i'm comfortable with um number seven there's a lot of like drinking and doing drugs like you can't on call in college like you might be like i'm not gonna surround myself around that and maybe you look up somebody can be doing it right in front of you without you even you know what i'm saying it's just a lot of it and you can get caught up in that lifestyle and get peer pressure easily so it's just something you should be mindful of and train yourself like i'm not gonna get peer pressure and like that peer pressure when you before you like that peer pressure in high school and with your friends at home is way different from them peer pressure in college like it don't even really be peer pressure you just be seeing everybody else doing you be like somebody said just hit the blunt one time one time they and you boom now you got a new addiction you know what i'm saying like this is something you gotta be cautious of you're not used to and it's something that you have to train yourself to slow down on because before you know it you look up you didn't it's three months to pass and every day of those three months you can barely remember what you've done because you've been under the influence every one of those days whether you're high whether it's drunk whether cross faded so that's just something you have to like learn how to like balance um you can forget your sleep skills. If you were like me, you can forget your sleep skills. My sleep skills were all over the place. I had no certain time I was in bed. Some nights I was up out till four o'clock in the morning. Some nights I was out till like, I was in the bed by nine. Like, it just all depend on that day for me. And I know a lot of people that are like that. Now last but not least, baby, these men, they grumbling. That's some sweet talkers. That's some smooth operators. Baby, women are too. The women are too, but they're not as bad as these men. These men, they would have you sitting there in love thinking you're really gonna be in a relationship with them and stuff. And these men will be still doing what they're doing. So it's just like something you kinda just gotta like wean yourself into. Like you gotta be, you gotta know the game. You gotta be a player to know a player. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't let yourself get caught up in no, oh, I love you and you're so beautiful. 
No, like these men will talk you out your drawers and leave you high and dry. Like that's just something you gotta be mentally prepared for because I know a lot of girls who went into college with that mindset. Like, oh, I love, love. I wanna find my relationship sweetheart, college love story, and I didn't got their feelings hurt because this guy didn't use you for your body, which wasn't right. But he didn't use you for your body and left you for dead, left you high and dry. That's something you also have second consideration because baby, you will be seeing her sad and depressed and ready to over this stuff. But yeah, you guys, that's all for this video. Those are my pros and cons. I'm going to do a part two. I didn't touch everything I wanted to, but I didn't want to make this video extremely long. So I'm going to do a part two. So stay tuned for that, you guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Bye. Party just